I've been getting a lot of people asking me about how I properly expose my GH5 images uh, for video. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick video on that today, showing you the two main tools I use that are built into the GH5 to make sure that my shots are exposed properly. And that is one of the key factors in getting a high quality film from your GH5, which seems obvious, but I feel like a lot of people overlook it, like nailing your exposure as often as you can is gonna change your films, obviously, but anyways, I'm gonna run you through the two settings on the GH5 that I use the most to make sure my exposure is almost always on point. Um, in this video, this is just a super quick video. If you want the more in-depth style of tutorial for the GH5, I'm doing a GH5 workshop, which you can check out up there or in the link below. Feel free to sign up if you're interested. Um, and I will assume that you know a few things Going into this video, you know how to use ISO, f-stop, and shutter speed to manipulate your exposure. Um, so everything in this video is going to be done in manual mode on my GH5, and uh, yeah, we'll dive right into it. All right, I'm going to quickly show you guys uh, how to turn these settings on. The two main settings I use to make sure my exposure is good on my GH5. So just press the center button and open up the menu here, and then basically scroll down to you see this guy, this little wrench with the C for custom. And then we scroll up to the top because we're dealing with exposure here. So we'll click on exposure. Um, I have my ISO increments set to one third, which basically allows me to climb up my ISOs. If you look in the bottom there by not hundreds, but just in thirds instead, which gives you a bit more control which is kind of nice. So I recommend doing that. ISO increments set to one third. Then we'll scroll down here. And as I talked about, we have the zebra stripes function, zebra pattern function down here. So we'll click that and you've got basically two different custom zebra settings you can set. So if I go to set down here, you'll see that zebra one, which is what I'm on, will show me when things are 100% over 100% exposed. So let me show you an example of that. That's this is what I leave it on all the time. So 100% boom, go back and it's on now. And you'll see as I basically open up the f-stop, you see these stripes here. That's basically telling me that this part of my image is overexposed uh, more than 100%. So basically, I won't be able to get any detail out of that image, which is exactly what zebra stripes are all about. So you try and notice where these patches are. Uh, in your shot and sometimes you will have them and there's no negotiating you know if there's the subjects down here in the bottom uh, sometimes you're gonna have to blow out the sky a little bit but you really try to avoid that um, so once zebra stripes are on that's good and then we also want to turn the histogram on which is right here just switch it to on and you'll see it right there and yeah we'll get into detail of what the histogram is actually all about but uh, those are the two main settings that really help me nail my exposure on the gh5 I'll quickly run you guys through how I would actually shoot a scene using the histogram and the zebra stripes to make sure that my exposure is always in a good zone in manual mode. So this isn't a particularly cool scene. It's a harmonica case in my office, so bear with me on that, but you'll get the idea of how I use these two tools. So we've got the histogram up here in the left corner, and basically what it's showing us is from zero to 100. So anything that goes past the right side means that it's overexposed and we won't be able to get any detail back from that area. And then anything on the left side of the histogram means it's too dark. And again, it's basically absolute black and absolute white on the right side. So as we see now, uh, we have all the data kind of bunched up in the left side of our histogram. And what we want is for the data to try and be evenly spread out across the histogram. So watch as I open up the exposure. Right now it's underexposed. It's all too far to the left. Let's open up the f-stop here, and you can see our data is getting spread out nice and evenly. So that is almost, and you know, we can push it a little farther, a little farther. And yeah, there you go. So you'll see when we push it just a bit too far, we get the zebra stripe right there, which means that area of the image is over 100% exposed and I will have no detail from that area. Now, typically you want to avoid having these zebra stripes, right? Because it means, okay, that part of the image is overexposed. But in reality, you will have it sometimes. Um, it's just the nature of it. Like, let's say the harmonica case is a person and you're doing an interview and just you have nowhere else to shoot it and the background is bright. You might have to basically overexpose the background to make sure that this 
person in the foreground is exposed properly. Um, but that will mean that your image is just not properly exposed. So anyways, as, as you can see, this is how I use the two tools. Um, so I'll bring it back down to the zebra stripes go away right there. And this is a perfectly exposed, balanced image right here. You can see the histogram, all the data is in between the right and left side. That is good, that makes us happy. And again, if I crank up the f-stop, you see, okay, that's underexposed. Um, and keep in mind that there's sometimes stylistic things that you're going for. Maybe you do want a darker image, um, or sometimes maybe you do want to blow out some of the highlights if you want the right side, if the sun's coming in from the right side and you want it to be bright from there. It's okay to break these rules, um, but typically if you're looking for a balanced exposed image, this is how I do it. So um, yeah, leave any comments below, questions, tips for me. I'm always happy to hear them. And don't forget to check out the longer, more detailed version of this will be in my GH5 filmmaking workshop, which I've been shooting the last month or so. And it's gonna be probably another month before it's done. But yeah, check out that link below and above and sign up for the workshop if you're interested. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you on the next one.